Okay, crypto community, let's see who is still here ready to learn. My name is Catalina and in this video I'm going to explain to you how overt ASIC boost works. In our last video regarding this topic, which should be popping up right here, we learned how the hashing process works, how the mining process works, how the SHA-256 algorithm works, but most importantly, we learned how we can save up to 13% of the energy in the mining process with ASIC boost. I challenge you to understand this topic because this technology can make the difference between making a profit and not making a profit in the mining process, especially during the bear market. I challenge you to understand this and how it is going to keep on evolving in the following months and years. In this video though, we're going to be focusing on overt ASIC boost. This is more of a technical video, but it's exactly what you need to take your knowledge and skills to the next level. So stay with me. This video is brought to you by Brains, the company behind Slashpool, the world's first mining pool. Brains also stands behind Brains OS, which is the very first full open source Linux based system for cryptocurrency embedded devices. Okay, we're gonna make a little recap from our last video. We said that Bitcoin is all about keeping the transactions flowing in the system in a decentralized way. Those transactions are also messages, but those messages are way too long. So we need to make a hash of those messages. In order to do so, we need a hash function and an algorithm. The algorithm that we use the most in Bitcoin is the SHA-256 algorithm. This one is going to grab the message and it's going to divide it into chunks of 64 bytes. We know that our aim in the process of mining is to make a double hash of the header of the block of a candidate block that after uh, is going to be extended in the block of chain. The header of the block is 80 bytes long, okay? So the SHA-256 algorithm is going to grab the, the, the header of the block, which is 80 bytes, and it's going to divide it into one chunk of 64 bytes and a second chunk of 16 bytes, all right? What I want you to understand here, I'm not going to explain everything in details again, I need you to understand how we achieve to save energy in the process of mining, in the process of calculating this SHA-256 algorithm. We're going to save energy by calculating chunk 2 once, we're going to fix it and we're going to use it, it over and over again and then our main focus is going to be on chunk 1. Let me say that again. The way we're going to save energy in the mining process with ASIC boost is in the way we're going to calculate the SHA-256 algorithm. And we're going to do so by calculating chunk two once, we're gonna fix it, using, use it over and over again, and then we're going to focus on chunk one. The difference, the main difference between covert and overt ASIC boost is the following. We're going to be focusing on the first 28 bytes of the Merkle root with covert ASIC boost and overt ASIC boost is going to be focusing on the version field of the header of the block. And our focus of this video is the version field of the header of the block. So let's keep on learning. In order for you to understand how overt ASIC boost works, I need you to understand the following two graphs that I'm going to show you. Do not get overwhelmed by this. I'm going to explain to you the exact terms that I need to um, that I need you to understand in order to proceed with this video and the understanding of overt ASIC boost. All right, but before we dive into this, I want to highlight again something that we also said in the last video, which is the process of something that we also mentioned in this one is that the process of mining requires making a double hash of the header of the block. Okay, and uh, by doing so, our second. Uh, our second hash that we're gonna have from this process, meaning our double SHA digest, our final hash that we're gonna have from this process is the one that is going to be compared with the difficulty target of the network, okay? Here we have the target comparison. This double SHA digest, the last hash of the double hashing process of the header of the block is going to be compared with the difficulty network that we have in the, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, which is adjusted every two weeks and more precisely every 2016 blocks. If a match is found, 
that means that this block is going to be mined and that information is going to be propagated in the network. All right. Here in this graph, we have another illustration um, of the header of the block of chunk one and chunk two. And here we have chunk two in red. And this is the part of the computation that is going to be fixed and pre-calculated. Pre All right. And then we're going to be focusing on chunk one, as we said before. And the terminology and the concept that I, that I want you to have in mind in order to proceed, proceed with the understanding of over ASIC boost is the mid state, which is the output of the blue compressor of chunk one. All right. Remember this word because we're going to be talking about this in a minute as well. Let's go to graph number two. A second way in which we can illustrate how we can save energy with ASIC boost and how the SHA-256 algorithm works is the following. All the components that you see in red, these are in the inner mining loop and they are updated at high frequency, while the components in green, they are in at less frequency. All Bitcoin mining ASICs, uh, they're going to process the components internally Okay, they're going to pre-calculate this and then they're going to be passed to the ASIC from the outside. I just wanted to illustrate this again one more time and to understand that we're going to be able to save the energy with ASIC boost uh, uh, in, the SHA, in, the, in the process of calculating the SHA-256 algorithm by pre-calculating and sharing the message schedule one over and over again, and they're going to differ in the mid state part in chunk one. All right. This is another way of illustrating uh, how ASIC boost is applied in the process of calculating the SHA-256 algorithm in the double uh, hashing process of the header of the block. And now we can move on with over ASIC boost. What we already know about over the ASIC boost is that it is easier to detect compared to covert ASIC boost, that it is segwit compatible and that it does not have negative incentives to mine empty blocks or blocks with just a few transactions. What we also know about a overt ASIC boost is that chunk two is fixed and that we're focusing on the version field in chunk one. The idea with overt ASIC boost is to generate multiple chunks one that can be loaded into the chip at the same time, and then we run the hashing engine in parallel for each one of these chunks. Here also, it is convenient to load multiple mid states. The hardware nowadays supports loading four mid states in parallel, okay, that are going to be processed, and each one of these mid states are going to share the nonce, which is in chunk two. Each one of these mid states also, they are going to represent a different value in the version field, all right? Here we have a, a representation of how much energy, energy we can save by loading multiple mid states. By loading two mid states, we're able to save up to 8% of the energy in the mining process. And as I told you, by loading four mid states, we can save up to 13% of the energy in the mining processes. And as, as I told you at the very beginning of this video. Now, generating multiple chunks one it's easy if we can change the version field. To do so, we need to talk about something that is called the Stratum Protocol extension, what it is and why it was developed. Here also is where the miners, where the developers are asking for 16 bits that could be changed, that are in the version field that could be changed by the miners. And these 16 bits are described in the Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 320, if you wanna go and check it out by yourself, okay? Now, next we're going to be talking about what the Stratum Protocol extension is and why it was developed. So if we mention that in order to implement over ASIC boost, we need to change the value of the, we need to change the version field in the header of the block, we have to talk now about what the version rolling Stratum Protocol extension is. So what is this version rolling? The version rolling is the action to do so, to change the version field, the value uh, of the version field in the header of the block. So here I wrote that the motivation behind the creation of this um, version rolling Stratum Protocol extension uh, is the motivation behind it is to allow miners to change 
the first value of the header of the block, which is the version field, and that is called the version rolling. The version rolling is backwards incompatible change to the Stratum protocol. Why? Because the miners couldn't communicate a different value, a different block version value to the server in the original version of the Stratum protocol. And at the same time, the server couldn't communicate safe bits for rolling to the miner. Okay? So both miners and pools, they needed to implement this um, protocol extension in order to support the version rolling, which we need uh, in order to change the version field, which is changing the ver version field of the header of the block in the process of applying over the ASIC boost in the mining process in order to save the energy that we want to save. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is all for now. I did not want to go deeper into the tech because I didn't want to make this video longer than 11 minutes approximately, but it is important that you invest your time to educate yourself about the fundamentals in order to have perspective. Perspective to see how the technology it is evolving now in the following months and years. All right, my name is Catalina. I thank you for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video. Ciao.